Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Hydro Sam. I make waifu over meta content, and today's video, I finally made my highly requested Mona guide. As an actual Mona main, in my guide, I'm gonna try my best to show you her kit, how to build her, and her team composition, and as well as some little text that may not be in other guides. Real quick, I just wanna shamelessly plug that uh, right now, I do stream on Facebook daily, except Mondays, where I do my thick Mona damage daily and I would love to have you there to embrace our waifu over meta supremacy. But anyways, enough about me, let's get into the video. Let's talk about Mona's normal attacks. Mona is able to perform four water splash attacks that deal hydro damage. Some things to note is that the third hit moves you back a little bit and the fourth hit locks you in an animation before you are able to do another normal attack. Like other Catalyst users, her normal attack skill percentages are pretty low, probably because of the fact that they auto aim and have a pretty good range and at a decent speed. If you want to use Mona as a pure burst slave, then I suggest you just skip this part of the video. But if you care how Mona can DPS with this talent, let me show you how to use this skill optimally. Now, if you notice from the skill percentages, the fourth hit does the most percentage out of the four, but that means you have to commit to the fourth hit every time. And once you do that, there's an animation that locks you in before you can begin another normal attack. You probably already know that you can just use Mona Sprint to cancel the animation, but the problem is that you will waste stamina. And this could be kind of a detriment just in case you're in a situation where you do not have any stamina because you either use your charge attack too much or you're in a crowd domain. This can also lead to a sprint in a direction you don't want just because of how Mona sprint animation works and is different from regular characters. Instead of the sprint, what you can do is right before you get locked into the animation of the fourth hit, you can jump to cancel it, but the fourth hit will still go through without you being locked into the animation. The quickest cancel is just jumping in place, but that limits your mobility. And what I prefer is jumping in a direction, whether it is towards the enemy to close the gap, whether it is to jump backwards to get create some space or maybe to the left or to the right to dodge an attack be careful not to jump too early if not the fourth hit will not come out the way you know if you did it perfectly is if you see the animation but do not hear it The last thing I want to talk about this talent is how underrated Mona's charge attack is. At talent level 9, you have a nice beefy 254.42% for the skill. It is one of the highest single hits in the game. I would definitely try to mix some charge attacks into your DPS, especially if you do not have C2 Mona. Now let's talk about Mona's elemental skill, Mirror Reflection of Doom. This is where most people start to get a little wet over Mona's kit. So, it continuously taunts nearby opponents attracting their fire. It continuously deals harder damage to nearby opponents. When its duration expires, the Phantom explodes, dealing AoE Hydro Damage Bonus. This is a great skill because it does a great job of taunting enemies, taking aggro off of you while continuously applying the Hydro AoE Elemental Damage onto enemies, and finally ending with a big beefy explosion. Unlike Ganyu and Amber's skill, it does not have HP, which means it'll be on the field for 6 seconds without being destroyed. That's pretty much it. If you don't really care about DPS Mona again, skip to the next skill, but if you do, this is significant to her DPS because just like I talked about earlier about jump canceling, you can actually use her elemental skill instead of jumping to cancel the animation of her fourth hit, just like how I'm about to show on screen. Also, since her E gathers enemies around it, you can also use that opportunity to do a big beefy charge attack to hit as many mob enemies as you can within its AoE. Also, another thing is that Mona's elemental skill can actually be used to block projectiles such as Helitro Archers, Abyss Mage Shots, and even First Phase Child Arrows. Now let's talk about what makes people really wet for Mona, which is Mona's Burst. Before I get into it, I briefly just want to say that I already did make a Mona Burst guide on my channel, which shows you six different vaporized setups you can pick and choose for your team. Also go into the vaporized burst explanation more in depth in that video. Now let's quickly talk about it here. When Mona casts her burst, she applies a hydro element onto enemies, and at the same time she traps them in a constellation looking bubble. If the enemy is small enough, it creates a crowd control by making them immobile. If the enemy is too big, they can still move, but they still have the bubble on them. As soon as they have the bubble on them, the omen is applied from the beginning, which increases damage taken to them. If you want to get fancy with the vaporize setup, without getting to the specifics, make sure the enemies have the pyro element on them when Mona casts her burst. Wait about 1.75 seconds for the internal cooldown of the game, then pop the bubble with the pyro attack and you should see big damage. The reason this is one of the best bursts in the game is because the amount of value Mona can provide for her team and because she has access to vaporize, and her skill has the second highest skill percent in the game, and she does a huge amount of damage with minimal setup. Another thing to note is whenever Ganyu came out, there is a popularity in freeze control compositions. And it was found by some people in the Mona Mains Discord that you can actually extend the duration of the omen by freezing big enemies without popping the bubble. Lakola does a great job explaining in his in his video, which I will link down below. But if you don't care about the freeze, just know that after you pop the bubble for five seconds, enemies will take an increased damage based on your skill percent 
by whichever member of your party. One last thing that I want to add about the birds that was actually discovered today by Lakola is that you can actually skip the internal cooldown of the game by pressing F1 on your keyboard or going to the little book thing in, in the menu. Wait the time there and then come back into the game and then just inflict the power damage onto them and you will still see the maximum amount of damage. Actually pretty cool tech and I'll also link that video that where he does it in the description because I didn't discover that. Let's talk about Mona's talent level prioritization. This is how I think you should prioritize her talents. In my opinion, Burst should always have a priority because of how OP it is, honestly. I don't really like using the word support Mona because at the end of the day, whether you're using Mona as a main DPS or a sub DPS, you want the most damage out of her, right? It doesn't matter if she's support, main DPS, sub DPS, you want the most damage out of her. So there really shouldn't be a difference in main DPS and support because whenever somebody says, oh, I'm just using her for support. Well, the first thing that comes into my head is that you're you are just using her as a burst slave where her only role is to go to the field to apply the crowd control and ex an extra damage bonus slash reactions for your party members. Now let's talk about her passive talents. Mona's burn lets her become like water and just cruise through it like nothing. She is still vulnerable to attacks while being in the state, but has the most speed compared to the sprint speed of other characters. You can also use it to do your weekly transmitter with ease. Waterborne Destiny is an essential part to her kit because 20% of her ER gets converted into Hydra Damage Bonus, which gives so much value to her kit. And basically means that you can look at ER artifacts substats as damage boosting substats rather, th rather than just a waste. Her second talent, you'll probably never use it, but if there's enemies around, you can stay on her sprint, and every two seconds, it'll spawn a mini hag, which does half the explosion damage of your current elemental skill talent. You actually don't have to be moving around to spawn one, you can just stay in place while being in a sprint to continuously spawn mini hags. Now let's take a look at Mona's constellation. If we took a look at C1, it makes her even a better support. C1 does not boost your Mona burst damage, but provides a lot of value for hydro elemental reactions for 8 seconds. C2 is good, I wish they buffed it a little bit more, but her C2 can make her compete for main DPS slots on teams. C3 is broken because they buff her elemental burst instead of elemental skill like on a lot of characters. C4 kind of reminds me of Hu Tao's passive talent, except Mona can take advantage of it too. This is a great one that adds more to her support kit because it gives crit rate to, your, to all your party. C5 is okay, I guess. And C6 is pretty busted if you want to do like a, vape, like a super vaporized charge stack. Because with the max stacks and the way damage works in the game, it's essentially going to give you a 180 hydro damage bonus on your next charge attack. But I still, don't, I still don't think it's the best because you have to be in her dash for at least a second to get one stack at least. But it can be useful in the right situations and paired with C2, you can expect you can expect a little bit more DPS. Honestly, I don't think Mona past C3 is worth it, but because I simp, I would gladly go past it just for her. I will be briefly going over the different types of team comps you can use with Mona. I say briefly because I don't want to make this video too long. I also plan to make separate videos going over each team composition to explain the purpose and different combos you can do. Now let's start with Freeze Control Mona. I'm going to be honest, this is one of the funnest ways to play Mona, but it's not the most entertaining to watch. I already have some videos on my channel showcasing this team comp a little, and oddly enough, my more popular video has my vaporized Mona artifacts instead of my Freeze Control Mona artifacts, and my Ganyu had a level 20 Amos Bow which is completely not optimal, but it just goes to show you that you don't need a lot to make this team succeed. So check those out if you want to see Freeze Control Mona. But basically, what you do with this team comp is you basically play a single player game, and it's not, and the whole point is not letting your enemies move. You'll be constantly applying freeze to enemies, and it doesn't even matter if they have shields, because shield enemies, when they're frozen, their shields are ignored, and you can still damage them without your attacks being blocked. So the whole point is to try to find a rotation to perma-freeze your enemies. Good characters to use with Mona would be, of course, Ganyu, Kaya, Diona, and you can throw in some animal characters to lower elemental resistance when you're attacking them. Vaporize Mona is all about getting those vaporized reactions. If you have somewhat a consistent crit rate, this team comp can be one of the most powerful in the game. Vaporize is the strongest elemental reaction in the game just because Mona and Child have access to the highest skill percent burst in the game. But now that Hu Tao is in the picture, the thing that sets Mona apart from Child is that unlike Child, Mona's charge attack is a single hit with a huge skill percent compared to Child's multi-hit charge attack. And because Vaporize only enhances the first attack that reacts with Pyro, this is what you need to take advantage of with Mona as it, this can basically lead to mini nukes you can do with minimal setup. With Venti or Sucrose, you can create a Pyro Infusion Swirl along with having access to her to Mona's nuke burst. This can lead to very, very quick kills. And a couple of characters that I would recommend for this build is for sure Bennett and any other Pyro character to have that double Pyro resonance and of course an animal character so you can get those Pyro infusions. Electro Charge focuses on damage over time rather than big burst damage and can also offer some control with Electro Charge stunning enemies. 
This is a fun comp, which if paired with a double electric resonance can give you an increase in elemental particles, which means more burst uptime. This is one of the easiest team comps you can have because most people already have Fischl from the event a long time ago. But if you don't, there's always Lisa and of course other support characters that could be good for this build is Beidou, Kaching, and just any double electro characters. Now let's talk about weapon choice for Mona. Of course, both 5-star weapons are the best for Mona. In my opinion, Skyward Atlas is the best for DPS Mona because it has the highest base attack, it gives you consistent elemental damage, and it gives you favor of the clouds, aka Cloudy. But because it has attack percent as a subset, it puts pressure on you to roll for like crit rate or crit damage substats in order for you to get a consistent build. Another small detriment is that Cloudy can pop your burst prematurely if you're trying to go for a big vaporized damage. But if you get used to the timing and situations, you can play around that. Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds is another great choice and is by far the best co-op weapon because Mona can take advantage of all those stacks with its passive talent, but if it's not co-op, then most of the time Mona will not be taking advantage of the stats, maybe just one or two, but never more than that. But the thing that makes Skyward Atlas good, since it has a crit rate subset, you can comfortably put on a crit damage circlet and be less pressured on your artifact rolls to have an overall good build, unlike the Skyward Atlas. And I'm just going to say this really quick when talking about weapons in general. You have to essentially view your weapons as a 6 artifact regarding the substat that you see with them. That's why weapons with crit rate or crit damage substats are really good because the only artifact that you can get crit damage or crit rate is your circlet. And you want both to be as high as possible so that we can have an overall consistent build. So let's get into the 4 star weapons now. The first ones I would consider is either the Witsith or the Solar Pearl. These weapons have crit damage or crit rate respectively which give a lot of value. The Witsith is best for clickbait Mona with those vaporized setups. Other than that the passive realistically is only going to affect every other burst during combat like in Spiral Abyss. Witsith is also more on the support side, but the boost can help you with your DPS output as well. It just sucks it has a long cooldown. Solar Pearl is more on the DPS side than so because you will always have those constant passive talents up with click 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 DPS Mona. But it just sucks because it's almost impossible to take advantage of the passive talents for a vaporized setup. Map of Mirror is good because it has the highest base attack from the other 4 star weapons. The Elemental Mastery is good unless you are using it for freeze comp then it's useless. But it's free to play friendly and it's easy to achieve those 2 stacks. A fun fact is that you can actually cause a vaporize on 2 enemies at once at the same time and they'll give you both stacks not just one. Favonius Codex is okay but it's more for like burst Slave Mona, the max ER from the weapon only gives you like 9.18 Hydro Damage bonus, but if you kinda just want max possible uptime on Mona's burst for your team, then this weapon is a great choice. For artifacts, I'm just gonna give you an overview guide because this subject deserves more in-depth videos for different team compositions. And also, I've said it before and I'll say it again, substats over set bonuses always, because at the end of the day, there's only a huge piece of pie that we have in our character stats. You can view all these stats right here as a huge piece of pie that you need to distribute evenly. There's only so much you can allocate to different stats without eventually taking away from one and adding it to another. It's all about finding a balance of what you need for your team comp. If there is one set bonus that I think you should really chase for, I guess it should be a two piece Hydro set because it gives value to all of Mona's kit. But other than that, but other than that, Nobles, Hydro, Gladiator, Wanderer's Troop are the best artifacts to farm for Mona. In my opinion, the best overall pair is two piece Hydro, two piece Nobles, then followed by a two-piece Hydro, two-piece Gladiator, because this gives you a value to all of Mona. A two-piece Nobles gives you a lot of value to her burst, and it's really good because of how high her skill scales. Two-piece Wanderers can help you with Vaporize or Electro Charge with that extra 80 Elemental Mastery. I really don't recommend getting a four-piece for the Wanderers troop. And before you ask me, yes, I do not recommend four-piece Hydro set. I think this four-piece set is not worth it because it only gives value to your normal charge attacks, whereas the other ones that I listed above give value to more of her kit and more stuff that is significant. So this is just me. Maybe it's an unpo unpopular opinion, but I don't really recommend you getting a four-piece of this Hydro set. Unless you're obsessed with just like click, click, click Mona, click, click, click DPS, then sure, go for it, right? But also, right, like I said, at the end of the day, it just depends on your substats. Maybe you have crappy substats for all the other artifacts and your only good substats are the four piece hydro and if that's the case then go for it remember at the end of the day everyone has different artifacts everyone has everyone has different substats so it's all just trying to get a balance of your stats it's all about trying to distribute this pie evenly to whatever you need it to be the only thing that i would try for you to remember is if you're running freeze control mona forget about elemental mastery you don't need any of that for freeze control mona and i think that's pretty much it honestly i probably missed something because there's just so much to mona as a mona main since day one 
This is all that I've learned up to this point. If I missed something or maybe messed up a little, please keep it civil in the comments. All I want to do is show you my favorite waifu Mona and how she is one of the best characters in Genshin Impact. And unlike a lot of people who have made guides on her, I actually use Mona daily on my team and try to optimize her as much as I can. If you found this video useful in any way, hit that like, hit that subscribe button to help me with my algorithm, please, and turn on the bell notifications so you can be updated with my waifu over meta content. Follow me on Facebook Gaming for daily Mona content except Mondays. Thank you all for the support on this channel. Remember, waifu over meta. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.